one day, one instant, one moment, and it can change your whole life and shape your future. These moments can be positive or negative, and they'll appear throughout our life, but we get to decide. We get to decide how it shapes our life. We will allow it to stay negative, or can we take that negative and make it positive? The positives are easy, they bring joy and they bring happiness. There are so many outside things, things beyond our control that help to shape us, that influence us, our morals, our values, and how we live our lives. I'm just a regular old plain Jane. I've lived my entire life here in this community I've worked 30 years as a dental office manager in the community. I volunteered on my day off at the Abington Police Department in their Victim Service Liaison Unit, where we help victims of crime to understand that there's help available for them, that they can go to an agency and can receive the help they need. Four years ago, I retired from dentistry to take the full-time position at the Abington Police Department. I coordinate the Victim Service Liaison Unit, and I also have the privilege of working with the youth in our community. I coordinate, as the Director of Youth Programs, our Police Athletic League, our Police Explorers Post, and I work with our Youth Aid Panel, which is a diversionary program, an alternative to court proceedings. I spend the rest of my time volunteering at the Montgomery County Victim Services Center a nonprofit agency who helps victims of crime. I've completed their 65 hour crisis counselor course, and I now volunteer on their 24 hour hotline. I can also be called out to a hospital for a sexual assault to help with the forensic exam. I'm there to advocate for that victim, to be with that victim, to be support, to let them know that they're not alone and that the agency can help them and can provide services to them throughout the next proceedings and the next step in their victimization. I've served on the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency and I had the privilege of serving on the Victim Service Advisory Subcommittee where we were able to draft a Victim's Bill of Rights for in the juvenile court system. Look, never in a million years did I ever plan for my life to be like this. I would have never thought I would be doing this. I know though that I have helped hundreds by volunteering through the Victim Services Center. I advocate for victims by speaking to local criminal justice um, majors at the local college. I have a chance to talk to them about the process that takes place in reporting a sexual assault. I try to make sure that even now in 2022, as a society, we don't go and try and judge and decide if it was a real rape. What's an unreal rape? I know that we need to show victims that they are not an afterthought, but that they are important and valuable to how we dispense justice. Who, after all, can say what is really just to a victim, but the victim themselves? We have a system that sometimes fails the victims. We need to make sure that their voice is heard. Unfortunately, some victims' voices are silenced and we're never heard from. For those victims, I continue to speak out. Sometimes people will ask me, how did you ever get involved with such work? And it's then that I have to reveal myself and take off the mask that I wear. The moment that changed my life, the day was August 23rd, 1993. The incident was a morning when someone broke into my home and raped me at knife point. That moment, I decided to fight. I wanted to live. Imagine begging another human being not to kill you. 
God was perfect that morning and he protected me and I wasn't stabbed. I wasn't even hit. The trauma of that victimization, I believe, will last a lifetime. I worked the very hard and I fought to get where I am today. I had the support of my family and my friends and the support of people I didn't even know. This victim service agency, which came alongside of me and walked me through every procedure I needed to know. I believe that the path was designed for me to follow. How else did I ever end up here? I fight and I continue to fight through this war. And through this war, there are battles. A lot of the battles in the very beginning, I did not win. I couldn't get out of bed and I would have pity parties for myself and I'd tell myself, well, who would blame me for staying in bed all night, all day? all week. After all, look what happened to me. But I fought. I fought those temptations. I fought to get out of bed, to do something productive, to not let him win. It was a defining moment for me. And what do I mean? I mean that my whole life has changed. I mean, even in the spring, sleeping with a window open to smell the lilac and that breeze that comes through your window. Well, I know that I can never, ever, and I have not since that day, ever slept with a window open in my home. Never will I again. That was before when I could do things. It defines, it's a moment in time that defines my life. There were things that happened before my rape and things that happened after my rape. It's truly a defining moment. Eventually feeling angry and lost, I called the Victim Service Center. And as I said before, they truly helped me through every aspect of my victimization. I advise people to remember the terrible feelings and the aftermath of victimization are part of the healing process that you can survive and you can learn to live and to thrive in that life. We don't have to be stuck in our victimizations. I now have a passion, a passion to help others, to stand up for those who can't, for those who are not with us anymore. Sometimes we have to stand up and we have to use our voices. You can use your voice and you too can be the difference in someone's life. We need to be kind to one another, to help one another. Life is hard and you do know what someone has been through. Sometimes we don't know what people have been through because I do believe that all of us wear masks and we hide the things that hurt us, the things that we can't get past, the things that we're trying and trying when all we have to do is open our mouth and someone can be there to help us, to help get us through, to help us win, to not struggle anymore, to not be alone, but to have someone. Isn't that why we're here? Why we're on earth? To be with one another, to help one another along, to help the orphan, the poor, the widow, to be there and to help. The other moment in my life, the moment when I called the ESC, the moment when I got my life back. It's not the same life I had before, for sure. It's a different life, but I'm stronger and I'm helping others. And knowing that means that I win, that I won that horrible morning of August 23rd, 1993. Take those days, those incidents, those moments. Reach out and get help. Take that negative and turn it into a positive. And you too can make the difference in someone's life.